Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Your Royal Highness, Your Excellency, um, I would like to add my welcome to you uh, on behalf of our Faculty of Asian and Eastern Studies. And we're delighted that you could come and also our guests. Welcome back, those who came here last year. And for the new ones, uh, we welcome you. And I hope that we'll be saying to you, welcome back next year. Um, and please bring your friends and your distinguished uh, colleagues with you to come to Cambridge to this um, event. The topic of the panel for this um, round table is the Arab Spring. And the moment you say the Arab Spring, you're facing problems of meaning and definition because there have been many names for this phenomenon. It's been called Arab Uprisings, Arab Awakening, Arab Revolution. And each term, of course, carries a particular meaning and a slant of meaning. I hope that in our discussions today, we will be tackling some of those issues of meaning, searching for meaning. Also, what we notice is the failure of governments, intelligence services, organizations, and academic experts in predicting the events that took place in Tunisia and to some extent in Egypt. And what would be interesting is to ask, why is it that we have failed? Is it because we define the political in a very special or narrow way that did not allow us to have a gaze on other things that are political that have escaped our notice? Is there an Arab solidarity or affinity sphere in the Middle East? And if so, what role can it play or does it play in reshaping the political landscape in the region? And looking ahead, what are the challenges facing the Arab Middle East and the region more generally? And people have been talking quite a lot, at least here, on whether the Arab revolutions will lead to an Islamist takeover in some of those countries. These and many other issues will be the subject of our discussions and talks today. And I'd like to invite our first speaker, Professor Bahjat Korani, to uh, open the session uh, for us. Please. Thank you. What is, what is called the Arab Spring has obviously caused a tsunami of protests. As many as 17 Arab countries, some are in civil war, Libya and Yemen. Some are trying to adapt, Bahrain, Syria, Morocco, and two have fallen down, Tunisia and Egypt. And when my friend, Dr. Abdel Aziz, asked me to talk about Egypt, I remember that my Tunisian friends usually get cross and say, we have started the whole thing, and everybody talks about Egypt. My answer to that, it is true. Tunisia is the birthplace, the trigger of the Arab Spring. But Egypt, with its 84 million people, is the landscape and the price. Where Egypt will go, I think the region will go. And hence, perhaps, I raise three or four points about after the revolt, revolution, uprising, my students of AUC like to call it revolution. If I don't use the term revolution, they feel insulted. So after what happened on January 25th, where is Egypt and the rest of the Arab world could be gone? And perhaps I raise four points, usually as a Gulf Research Center, we have lots of food for thought. And I thought that I'd give thought for food with the four points. One, 
the element of governance. You have the collapse of the regime, and in Egypt now, you have at least a problem of duality of authority. You have a cabinet that is supposed to manage the country, Tasir al Amal. But the real power is in the 19 member military council. And there is there problem sometimes of improvisation, inconsistency, lack of coordination. So that is the first problem that Egypt in that revolutionary situation has to solve. Second problem, rebuilding social capital, rebuilding trust between government and people that has been at a very low level and continues to be. And hence, the first issue is to try to regain the trust. And it seems to me one important aspect in this respect is fair and speedy trials for the symbols of corruption that have been there in the country before. Number three, challenge number three, the economy. After the revolution, there has been another revolution, revolution of rising expectations. People are expecting too much. With the high level of expectations, you have a low level of productivity. You have the sit-ins, the strikes, flight of capital, and at the same time, people are expecting more money. Egypt is a poor country. 40% of the Egyptian people live below $2 a day. And people can't wait. They think that they have waited too much. So that is I think a very important and serious challenge, how to put the economy back on track and quickly. Fourth challenge, and most important, what we call, we uh, political scientists, SSR, security sector reform. Police had a very bad reputation, and I would say rightly so, but you need the police to establish a minimum of daily life. In many parts of Egypt, the streets are sometimes insecure. Lots of thugs have been released or escaped away from prisons. Police force is demoralized, hence, the importance of security sector reform. I think I'll just limit myself to these four challenges. I think they are important for any case of transition. Again, in political science, we have a huge literature on transition to democracy, and we have <coughs> nice jargon for it. for it. We talk about transitology. And now we are talking also about consolidation of democracy, consolidology. Egypt is not yet in either case. Egypt reminds me very much of the first stage of a missile. It has been launched, but it needs the second stage, that is the navigation system. And I think many of the countries in the region, whether it is Libya, Yemen, Syria, <coughs> Bahrain, Tunisia, I think they are going to face the same problems that Egypt is facing. So what takes place in Egypt is a sort of lab. It tells us what we can expect from the future. And hence, it is very important to think about how we can not solve, but at least control these problems and put this country back on track. I was asked really not to speak very much. I didn't expect it to be 
a sort of round table and discussion, so I'll keep it light. But I hope that in the discussion, and certainly by the time we meet next year, the Arab Spring would have blossomed, that we have been really on track, and that we will talk much more about achievements and less about challenges. Uh, not only for Egypt, not only for the Gulf, but for the whole region, I say inshallah. And I wish our meeting best of luck, and I thank you. Thank you, Professor Kurani. Thought for food, ologies, a few ologies, and also navigation systems, rockets, a lot to think about and chew. May I now call on His Excellency um, Abdul Latif Sayani to address us. You don't have to go there, you can speak from here if you wish. So, you want to go.